main reason for doing this presentation is recruiting. So we, we really want to um, have the, the best talent in the world uh, come and work at Neuralink, uh, anyone that's interested in trying to solve this problem. Um, and that's, uh, that's actually the primary purpose for this, uh, this presentation. So, okay. Um, so the, the, the why of Neuralink, uh, just to, to go over it, is I think it's important for us to address brain-related diseases. Um, the, the, everyone, if, they, if you survive cancer and heart disease, the odds are that you will have uh, some brain-related disorder. So it'll be like Alzheimer's or, or dementia. And if you don't, uh, friends and family will for sure. Um, and it, I think unless we have some sort of brain-machine interface uh, that can solve uh, brain ailments of all kinds, whether it's an accident or uh, congenital or any kind of brain-related disorder, uh, in, in, or, or a spinal disorder, if you know somebody who's uh, broken their neck or broken their spine, uh, we can solve that with a chip. And, and this is something that I think most people don't uh, quite understand yet. And we're going to go over in detail how this is possible. Um, but I, th I think there's, there's an incredible amount we can do to, to solve um, brain disorders, act, uh, damage. Um, and, and all this will, will occur actually, I think, quite slowly. Um, so I do want to emphasize that it's not going to be like suddenly uh, Neuralink will have this incredible neural lace and start taking over people's brains. OK. It, it will take a long time. <laughs> Um, so, and, and, and you'll see it coming. So getting, getting FDA approval for implantable or devices of any kind is quite, quite difficult. Um, and this will be a slow process where we will gradually increase the um, issues that we solve until ultimately we, we can do a full uh, brain machine interface. Uh, meaning that we can in, in, uh, ultimately <laughs> Yeah, this is going to sound pretty weird, but um, achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence. So uh, but th this, is, this is not a mandatory thing. Um, this is a thing that you can choose to have if you want. Um, and and uh, this, this is something I think is going to be really important um, at a civilization level scale. So, um, and I, I've, I've said a lot about AI over the years. Uh, but I, I think even in a benign AI scenario, we will be left behind. Um, and so and hopefully it is a benign scenario. Um, but I think with um, a high bandwidth brain machine interface, I think we can actually go along for the ride. Um, and we can effectively have the option of merging with AI. I think this is extremely important. Um, and, and and if you think about your limbic system and your cortex, your, your limbic system is kind of your primal needs and wants. And it's, it's like where your, a lot of your emotions are coming from. And then the cortex is like the, the thinking, planning part of your brain. And I haven't met anyone who yet who wants to get rid of either the cortex or the limbic system. <laughs> so, so clearly they work, to, work together well. Even though your cortex is, in principle, far smarter than your limbic system, uh, Everybody wants to keep the limbic system and their cortex. So hopefully, um, we can have a tertiary layer, which is the kind of a digital superintelligence layer. And in fact, you, you already have this layer. So it's your phone and your laptop. And the constraint is just the, how well you interface, the, the, the input and output speed. Um, so the output speed is especially slow, since most people are typing with thumbs these days. So you have a very slow output speed. Your input speed is much faster due to vision, but the thing that will ultimately constrain our ability to uh, be symbiotic with AI is bandwidth. Um, so in, in the limit, after, after solving a bunch of brain-related uh, diseases, there is the, the existential, uh, it's mitigation of the existential threat of AI. Or, yeah, this is the point of it. Um, <laughs> so. Creating a well-aligned future 
is, is that that's the idea. Most of nearly 100 billion cells called neurons. Neurons come in many complex shapes, but generally they have a dendritic arbor, a cell body called a soma, and an axon. The neurons of your brain connect to form a large network through axon dendrite junctions called synapses. At these connection points, neurons communicate with each other using chemical signals called neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are released from the end of an axon in response to an electrical spike called an action potential. When a cell receives enough of the right kind of neurotransmitter input, a chain reaction is triggered that causes an action potential to fire and the neuron to in turn relay messages to its own downstream synapses. Action potentials produce an electric field that spreads from the neuron and can be detected by placing electrodes nearby, allowing recording of the information represented by a neuron. Um, well, I think like a lot of people in the audience, you know, there's a wide range of, of uh, knowledge about neurons. Um, I mean, s some people view the brain as like this incredibly mystical thing that cannot, you cannot interface with the brain, but, and, and then some people are aware of deep brain simulation, uh, such as occurs for Parkinson's uh, patients. So um, try, try to address the broad range of, of, of understanding. Um, so um, I mean, neurons is essentially the, the, uh, you know, there's that whole idea, what if we were just a brain in a vat? Uh, this is often posed by philosophers, uh, except we are a brain in a vat, and that, that vat is our skull. Um, everything that you perceive, feel, hear, think, it's, it's all action potentials. It's all just, it's neural spikes. Um, and it feels so real, you know, it feels very real. But, but it's, it's this, these are all uh, impulses from neurons, what, what's called a, a spike. And our, our goal is to record from and stimulate um, spikes in neurons and, and do so in a way that is uh, orders of magnitude um, more than anything that's been done to date. And uh, safe and um, good enough that you can, it's, it's not like a major operation. It's, it's sort of equivalent to, to sort of a LASIK type of thing. So where, where you can sort of sit down, machine does this thing, and you can walk away uh, with, within a few hours. And that's it. And you don't, you're not even in a hospital. So, um, so like there's, there's basically, uh, in terms of key points that are worth taking away, the system that we were designed in version one uh, is capable of on the order of 10,000 electrodes. So each, each chip, which is four by four millimeters, is capable of, of a, a thousand um, electrodes, or has a thousand electrodes, um, and we think doing up to 10 is feasible. 